You may however ever find yourself in a situation where you're particularly passionate about a certain subject and as you try to take action to improve upon yourself as an individual, you may encounter other individuals or group of others upon which they are superior and better better humans who are just as passionate as you but are better at the activity that you so wish to become better at in every single faucet. Let's use the example of climbing and drawing as the examples for this video. Climbing because it's a physical activity that requires physical adaptations and drawing because it's more of a mental type of thing as opposed to something physical. Here we go. One, don't get demoralized. <laughs> Hardly ever ever are there as many talented and gifted individuals as one would like to perceive there to be. No one in the history of ever ever has ever picked up a pencil and just became the god of drawing. Nor has anyone ever ever in the history of ever just touched a rock and automatically became the god of ascension. But of course, talent and genetics do play a role in how adequate you are at something. But those are so few and far in between. You are more likely to toss a rock anywhere within the states land upon a human being and that human being will be both unable to draw and unable to climb anything. That is the normal person. That person is probably you in terms of your starting location at least. And you start in that location of being unable to draw slash unable to climb anything because believe it or not, you're not good at it because you never put any time or effort into the said activity. You know, they're bad at drawing because they've simply never drawn more than five minutes when they're in elementary school and totally stopped once they got into adulthood. Artiste, I'm sure you've had this scenario happen upon you 10,000 times where you show someone your drawing or someone picks over your shoulder to look at your drawing and they go, wow, you're so talented. I wish I could draw. Then you simply look at them and you ask them, oh ho ho, so you wish to draw five hours a day every single day? And what we realize and what we always blatantly known all along, but for some odd reason hide it as some form of a blanket of shame. Things don't just happen, you make things happen via tremendous effort and consistency throughout a long period of time. So when the climber comes in and flashes your project, Flash means to do on the first try. You should automatically assume that the said so individual has been climbing longer than you and they've been climbing better than you. Let's talk about the idea of doing something for a prolonged period of time. There is this whole I've been climbing for three years versus I've only been climbing for one year and I'm better than the guy who's been climbing for three whole years. Debate. But why is this? Surely three years is always better than one year. And if you think this, you are absolutely correct. Given that both parties are the same. Now the miscalculation here and the thing that as false is perspective, specifically the guy who's been climbing for three years. You see, the first time an individual begins an activity is the date upon which he will remark inside his brain that he's been doing the activity. For example, how old are you? Well, I was born on so and so, so that makes me so and so years old. And that's a very valid, honest answer because you don't really have to do anything to keep track of time so long as you stay alive. It's what you may call it a very passive form of timekeeping. What's not passive is improving yourself, specifically a skill. Say you started climbing in 2020 and today is 2023 so you've been climbing for three years well that's wrong the very first time you tried climbing was in 2020 and then you were on and off for a couple of months and then you stopped for like a year and then you just recently picked it back up and now it's 2023 but you still tell yourself that you've been climbing for three whole years when in reality you've accumulated a probably the experience of a beginner put it this way just because you know a girl for 20 years and then you started dating when she was 20 to 21 doesn't mean you've been dating for 21 years it means you've been dating for one year and so when you introduce your partner you say oh well we've known each other for 20 years but we just started dating last year so you've been semi climbing for three years in actuality you probably have three months of actual experience under your belt and that's just not that much especially compared to the guy who's been climbing for a whole year but the one year guy has been climbing consistently his entire one year so while you separated yours into three years he's congested his into one year and he was consistent and consistency is key and therefore he has 12 months against your three months and therefore of course he's better and not to mention there's also the mindset and methods upon which you choose to tackle the activity for say example some people they just like to climb for fun which is totally valid they don't particularly care about getting better and therefore when they get stuck at round v5 v6 they tend to stay stuck there their entire lives and that stuckness of no progression doesn't emotionally affect them enough to warrant a change and therefore it's rather common to hear i've been stuck at v5 for like three to five years now v5 by the way is the grade of the difficulty of a climb and climbing but that same individual has chosen chosen to do nothing to remedy this problem if they even view it as a problem you know if you draw every single day for three years and three years later your drawing still looks the exact same you gotta ask yourself do i just like drawing because it's fun or do i want to be someone who gets good at drawing because getting good at drawing is fun i want you to understand that time isn't particularly important it's experience two don't measure the distance close the distance if you see someone do an unbelievably hard move in your eyes instead of counting the distance between the two of you close the gap by dissecting the climbers movements look at all the individual minute details 
typically speaking better climbers tend to move better and not just for the reason that they are better though that reason is totally valid but because they move better like they physically position their bodies in more advantageous positions compared to someone who is less experienced. A hard move to them is, how do I do this move? For you, it may be, there's no way I can do this, I'm not doing this. You give up after trying half-heartedly on one attempt, and they try with max effort and energy for 5-10 attempts before putting on the back burner or until success. And I'm not talking about like a hard move for them is impossible for you, I'm talking about a hard move for you in ratio to your strength and a hard move to them in ratio to their strength. When faced with the same level of threat per your skill level ratio, show it out a better climber will put in more effort to try to overcome it whereas the worse climber will not if you take a picture from one of your favorite artists and post it next to yours you got to make sure you don't bash yourself too hard and you have to understand that the artist that is in your favorite is not just good because they're good they're good for reasons that are very logical so the exercise is to break down the anatomy of the drawing figure out the fore mid background decipher the direction of the lighting bounce lighting you have to stop seeing oh my god it's so cool you gotta start paying attention to what is correct about this image and how do I implant it onto my own. In other words, do a study of a piece of work that you admire, not do a self-deprecating analysis of a, via a piece of work that you can never hope to achieve. Because I believe that at the end of the day that the goal should be to better yourself regardless of the methods and regardless of any methods. By getting better, we get closer to those or who we want to be, most likely. Three, appreciate the distance. All the time, it's so easy to look at the end problem and say, I only want that. I don't want what came before it. Just give me the final results. And unfortunately, when it comes to skills, you just can't do that. There are no shortcuts. There's only walking and walking slightly faster. I used to particularly look at those that are better than me in both climbing and drawing and just wonder to, my, and just wonder to myself, how are you that adequate? But as I put my head down, literally, for drawing, I started to improve. And while I was nowhere near their skill, everything became ever so obvious. If I keep training and working, I will become better. It was only a matter of time and consistency, really. You can't ever really make up for 10 years, but you can sit down and go to work right now for the next 10 years. And in those next 10 years, you will have become a much better person at your craft. Like honestly, if you were to work every single day, can you imagine not getting better at whatever it is that you hope to get better at? It's almost inconceivable, nigh on impossible. And so as I look at these guys that are just so much more better than me, I don't forget to look backwards at the person who matters most, me. I see the improvements I made throughout the years and I know I wish I would have started sooner, but I also know, ain't nobody really trying to hear that now. You have have to use what you have not what you can't get back or everyone wants to get better i hope you don't think that these rtcs and these climbers are not there simply to outdo you and to show off their prowess no nobody particularly cares about you in those regards all the best care about is becoming better and if you have your eyes on them while they're going ham so be it Understand that everyone wants to be better and the higher you get, the more normalized that feeling becomes. Which means if you want to be better, you fit right in along with the best. Trust me, you're not the only one wondering why you're not as good as so-and-so. Because um, let me uh tell uh you, um, second place is always upset because they did not get first place. Second place will go home and cut open what went wrong. How can I be better? Why did I make these mistakes? Do you want to know what first place is doing besides celebrating? I won because my impeccable training record. I need to replicate this in the future. I almost messed up. Here's how I did it. Etika, etc, etc. With every victory or step of improvement, there's an affirmation of success, letting you know that you're heading in the correct direction. And with every setback or plateau, there's a questioning phase that must occur. Why has the progress ceased? Why was the desired outcome not met? There's always a cost and drive for improvement and nothing is an accident. 5. Walk by yourself. No one wants to hold your hand on your path to glory, nor will doing so actually lead you up there. You gotta walk by yourself. If you are thrust into the opportunity, to learn from someone better. They physically cannot make you better. You have to take a knife and slice all the information off of the big B-E-A-U for brain and cram it into your cranium. So the other day I was climbing on the board and I asked a much better climber, hey brother, my man, yo, my G, what do you think is wrong with my climbing? And the most excellent gentleman said, well, you see, brother, young man, my G, grasshopper, you got to push a little bit harder at your feet. And I already knew this information as if if you climb, you know to push with your feet. But when you ask for help, you got to listen because they're not trying to make you worse. Push harder with my feet okay and you want to know what happened i improved immediately i took his advice that i already knew and then i asked myself why is he telling me harder to push with my feet i thought if i was but it doesn't really matter what i think or how i feel in the learning environment you have to take advice and ask yourself why they told you to do whatever it is that they told you to do apparently i wasn't using my feet proper in the eyes of this gentleman and so i conformed to his version of a better 
me instead of trying to push my own agenda of what I thought a better me would look like. And as a result, I climb better. When someone tells you to try harder, do you find yourself asking them what do they mean? If you do, you may, one, showcase that you particularly cannot think for yourself, which may just be a lack of experience so you're ignorant as consequence, in which case this will be overcome with time and effort. You're drawing and someone tells you to try harder. You must now within a split of a microsecond ask yourself, how come they don't think I'm trying hard already? And that's the real question, right? What is this outside individual seeing that I am not able to see? You must make everything about you. Be ridiculously selfish when it comes to your pursuit of improvement. Two, putting yourself in a position of teaching slash debate versus learning. Now, nothing wrong with teaching and debating because you can most definitely learn it that way too. But by putting yourself in a position of learning, you're just totally open to all ideas. You basically allow yourself this new avenue upon which you're willing to accept ideas upon which you will have never gone about if left to your own devices. This is called perspective. And whether the idea given to you was a good or a bad one, after executing, you for sure now know whether it was a good or bad one. And perhaps you may not want to execute on what you may have to consider a bad idea, but doing a bad idea is better than sitting idle and wondering what to do to improve. And also by doing something wrong, you highlight the correctness of all your previous correct ideas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, partner.